13 minutes into the first half, the Istanbul Basak Sahir players walked off the field of play. They said that the fourth official had used racist language to one of their coaching staff. We heard the words here. We saw the pictures. Rude Hullet, Didier Domi, Nigel de Jong here with us in the studio. Before you hear from them, perhaps the best thing we can do right now, if you're joining us late, we'll just play you what happened and you can make your own mind up here. When he's mentioning a black guy, is he saying this white guy? Because when he mentioned a black guy, he says this Negro. I know. He didn't say anything. Your racist is Negro. You show him. You show him. You have to show him also. Okay. Discussion for one hour. When you're mentioning a white guy, you never say this white guy, you say this guy. So why when you mention a nigga? Listen to me. Why when you mention a black guy, you have to say this black guy? Say, but no, see, from this Indian language, I coming think from Latin language and negro and negro, same race, same word race. I know French very well. No, he's a French citizen. No, no, sorry. Now you have a racism stamp. Now, now you have a racism stamp. Say to come on, this is football. This is not football. Well, those pictures, that audio speaks for itself. There was a foul on 13 minutes by Kimpembe. You heard Webo, the Istanbul Basak Sahir coach, remonstrating. The fourth official then drew the referee's attention to the incident. Webo was shown a red card, but you heard what was said. You heard what Webo felt he'd been called by the fourth official. Now, we have been shocked by some of the things that have happened in 2020. We've been shocked by some of the things we've heard in the last week. But one thing I didn't expect to hear tonight or any night is the match officials, those people entrusted with the safety of the players on the field, to be the ones accused of using racist language towards players. Nigel de Jong, Didier Domi, Rude Hullet with us here tonight on Being Sports. Uh, Rude, what's your immediate reaction to what you saw and what you heard in Paris tonight? Now, first of all, of course, I'm stunned Sorry. that somebody uses uh, that language. Uh, I heard here also on the Dutch television that uh, some Spanish people also called everybody Negrito, Negro. It happened also with Suarez and now also with Cavani. If you say things like that, doesn't mean it's right. Maybe there's a moment that you have to change your attitude uh, towards black people. The good thing is, is that Paris Saint-Germain players reacted immediately. I saw Mbappe immediately saying that, hey, we called him a Negro and we have to go out. So it means that the solidarity among the players is great. I have to also uh, give credit also to the, to the officials also of the Turkish team who immediately stood up for their uh, players and said, we don't accept this. 
So for that reason, I'm very happy with uh, the, the way uh, the players, the officials reacted. And now I am curious to see what uh, UEFA is going to do because they have a big campaign to kick out racism and all about the respect. So let's see what's coming out of that. I think that UEFA will handle this in a proper way and uh, make an example of it. Didier? But we, we already said everything, I think, you know, in the, at half time. Um, it's pretty obvious, you know, what he said. And um, What would you like to happen now? How do UEFA make a statement which actually carries some weight on this matter? I don't know, but you have to be big this time because we hear so much things, we see so much things around the pitch. But now you, you really have to act because it was uh, like it was normal on this one. And, uh, and I like the reaction of, uh, of Dembaba, who was really great about you don't call someone by his color, wherever he comes from. And uh, his assistant, end of the story. So it should be big, you know, the, the punishment now because, uh, because you don't do that kind of thing and that's simple as that. Is it worse, Nigel, because it was a match official? We should never accept it if it comes from the stands, but we know that in some countries, sometimes it happens. Is it worse because it's the match officials here? Well, of course, you know, like any, any person on or off the pitch having racial slurs towards a player or any staff member of the opposite team or from your own team is wrong in any saying. But when it comes down from your old officials, the guys who are protecting the safety of the, of the players, who are there for the respect and the values of the game as well, they have been appointed by the UEFA as well to, to, to guide a game like that. And then have one of your officials say a racial slur to an, a, an, 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 a, a staff member, yeah, that's, that's, a, that's a complete disgrace. So you have to take this in consideration to be one of the worst cases that we've seen in the history of football. Because there is no, there are so many cameras and so many microphones today in today's game that you hear everything as well. So I think the only punishment for is if he's found guilty in, of course, the investigation that they will have to wait for, because they have to hear it from his side as well. And if they if they find him guilty of what he said in the racial slur, for me the only punishment that can be in this place to put out a proper example is to serve a, a ban for life in football. Don't want to see him anymore in the game of football. Don't want to see him anymore in the amateur football as well. Just ban him for life to make it a statement. And of course, it's going to be the scapegoat. That's going to be for sure. But the UEFA going to make a statement. What Ruth said as well, with the no to racism and the respect campaign that they have, they have to stand up for this. What about the point Ru made about that people may say that in some countries, language like that isn't seen as offensive? I, I understand and of course I hear it around me as well because I play with different kind of players and different kind of uh, staff members as well from different countries. But it, that, that doesn't justify for you to say it out loud. It doesn't justify for you to say it because it is in, an, in a way for you thinking that you not respect the op opposition or another, another team member. So this all has to do with education. Hmm. Everything is education. When the UEFA educate their own people they appoint and that is referees, there's employees inside the, 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 the organization, and it has to come from the top. The only way you can change this racism at the moment is that you change at the top. More diversity, more education, and then it has to come from the top down to the bottom. And what Ruder said as well, you can't stop. You can't start from the bottom. This has something to do with education. You have to start from the top. Change the way how we use the language. Change the way how we see each other, the respect that they have towards each other. So, for me, this is a great statement from both Basak Shir, but also for Paris Saint-Germain. Just to back Basak Shir up as well. You know, seeing like we unified as a whole community in football as well, and just step off. Step off the pitch, make an example out of this, and he's going to be the scapegoat. He's going to get a lot of stuff, you know, towards him. But, I mean, you have to set a proper example, and the way if I have to do it. So, Is it I concerning, well, Didier, that it was the players who had to take this into their own hands. It wasn't the officials, it wasn't UEFA. It was the players who had to make a stand themselves. Th that's why I told you I like the reaction of Dembaba, you know, who came out from the bench, you know, 
was very brave and courageous. The, the thing is that it's always education, but it's just re reverse the situation. If the official was a, a football player and he was on the bench and he was called up by his colors, how would I have reacted? You understand what I mean? So this is the whole point. So it's, you, you, you never point out, especially if you're UEFA, if you're a big organization, they have to know that they don't do that. If they were at this place on the bench, he wouldn't have liked being calling by his color. But he would, so, never, he would never understand it because he never grew up at the opposite color of his skin. You understand? So he would never understand what it feels to be called that name. But he, he, would, he would have had a reaction. Yeah, of course he had to have a reaction. And that's, that, that's what you said as well. It's about education, right? Exactly. Everything is about education. Yeah. How, do you, how do you handle a situation that is now on every front page news by tomorrow, yeah? On every channel and social media, yeah? It's gonna be the talking point. Forget about football. It's all about the racism right now at the moment. How are you gonna change forward? How are you gonna, how are you gonna set the tone towards the near future as well? For, to kick this racism out from your own officials, from your own employees. And I think the, the, the solidarity that, that has been shown today, you know, and the reactions that we already see on, on, on social media channels, on different outlets, is so unified that everybody has to ha have, to have a reaction. So for me, they have to do something right now. And I'm really curious what Ruud as well said. I'm really curious what UEFA is going to do now. As you said, Nigel, back page, probably the front page of every newspaper tomorrow, isn't talking about Manchester United being eliminated, about Barcelona losing at home. This is the story which is making headlines tonight. At Istanbul, Basak here tweeted this, as you can see, 48 minutes ago, simply, no to racism, they said. Uh, Raheem Sterling, of course, who's been on the wrong end of this, uh, said, that is loud and clear.